So this is a simple case, vertical wall, a circular flow towards the wall, that's radial flow regime. So you've got a stabilization in your derivative. And again, the stabilization level is inversely proportional to kg. But let's assume that further away from the wall, you've got a reduction in net thickness. Okay, like in this example. So you are further away from the wall, large delta t, and now your kh is getting reduced. So if, if your kh is getting reduced, this number is getting higher, and you might expect a higher stabilization. So like this. So early time, and in this case about one hour on the log scale, you will have radio flow regime near the wall bore in the horizontal plane. Further away from the wall, so with the low scale, we've got 10 hours, 20, 30, 40, etc. Maybe about 80 hours. Now you've got the second stabilization, and that's due to reduction in net thickness. So higher stabilization as well. You might have more than one stabilization, and that could be due to wall completion. So in this example, with a cross section, we've got our vertical wall here with near the well bore radio flow regime in the horizontal plane. Further away from the well, at large distance, we still got this same radio flow regime in the horizontal plane, and that is across the entire net thickness of the reservoir. So when you look at the derivative plot, you've got only one stabilization. But let's play a bit with this well, and let's turn the well a bit like this. So now we've got a deviated wall with a small angle with respect to the vertical. Intuitively, near the wall bore region, you might expect a radial flow regime in the plane normal to the wall direction. Okay, so like in this example. Further away from the wall, this system acts as a sink point, and at large distance, you will still see the radial flow regime in the horizontal plane and across the net thickness. Intuitively, you can see that um, these radio flow regimes near well bore and a large distance are not too different with a small angle. So you will only see one stabilization on your derivative. But if the angle starts to increase now, and in general for a large angle, more than 80 degrees, now you will still see near well bore the radial flow regime in the plane normal to the wall direction. Away from the wall, this is a sink point, so you still have radial flow regime in the horizontal plane across the net thickness. But now these two radial flow regimes are distinct, and you should expect to see two stabilization now. If the wall is horizontal, now you will see first stabilization near the wall bore, indicative of radial flow regime in the vertical plane. And further away at large distance, or large delta t, you will still see horizontal radio flow regime. So this is the horizontal radio flow regime at large distance. So now you see two distinct flow regimes, two distinct stabilization on your derivative, as I've shown here in the red plot. So first stabilization in this particular example at one hour, and that's due to your vertical radio flow regime. So that's in the plane normal to the wall direction. And the second stabilization further away from the wall, large delta t, and that's due to the horizontal radio flow regime across the entire net thickness. So in pink, this is our vertical wall, and in red, we've got our horizontal wall now, with two radial flow regime. So by having an horizontal wall, you change your flow behavior around the near wall bore. You create a different radial flow regime. And what you do is to bring this derivative downwards near wall bore, small delta t. And by bringing this derivative downwards, since the delta p plot in blue is attached to your derivative plot in red, you also bring your delta p plot downwards. And compared to a vertical wall, which is this pink dashed line, you are reducing the vertical separation between the two plots. So effectively, with an horizontal wall, in this particular case, you reduce the total skin. That, that was our second main statement. Right, so we saw two quick examples, a reduction in net thickness and an horizontal wall. And this is the two plots that we saw. Okay. If you look at them, they are quite the same. You've got wall bore storage, 
and a hump due to the skin, a short stabilization near well bore at one hour, and then a second stabilization further away from the well at large delta t. And this is to illustrate non-uniqueness. You are measuring pressure and the rate. You got access to this plot. And what you try to discover is your well and reservoir system. And in this case, you can realize that you need to take into account other information before analyzing the well. And obviously, you need to consider your well geometry, your well deviation, and as well, your geology and seismic. And that is to try to help you to reduce this non-uniqueness. Non-uniqueness is also going to come from the type of interpretation model that you're going to use and the selection of your radial flow regime in the horizontal plane. In this case of uh, horizontal well, I pick my stabilization here. I'm assuming that this short stabilization at early time is due to the vertical radial flow regime and this stabilization is due to the horizontal radial flow regime. But if I had taken my stabilization at this level to identify my horizontal radial flow regime, I would have assumed that my vertical radial flow regime is masked by the unit slope straight line and the hump. And then probably in this case, I would have assumed that this is a boundary. Okay, so this is just to illustrate to you non-uniqueness. We've got two different configurations for the well and reservoir and the same plot.